I thought it was compelling when I saw on Facebook you were talking about your rather close race against Representative Justin Price. Um, that's in uh, District 39 in Richmond, Exeter, Hopkinton. Yes. And um, it was close. What, can you talk about how close that was? It was a nail biter. Yeah. <laughs> um, 321 votes. So, um, you know, had 160 something people voted for me, uh, I would have won the race. So yeah. it was close. <laughs> you really just needed to convert a random 161 people and you would have had it. Yeah. And it was a, it was a, and just, I, I want to, I should back up a little bit. Like Justin Price is in the news lately because he was a member of the General Assembly, Rhode Island General Assembly, who was at the January 6th Trump rally that turned into a mini insurrect, insurrection. And he says he did not go inside the Capitol building. He was part of the march, but he also made some extraordinary claims in afterwards, which I'll get to, but I just want to kind of set that context right now before we go on. So mm -hmm. during your race, what were the issues that your um, constituent or your would-be constituents uh, were interested in? What were you hearing when you were knocking on the doors? So um, a lot of things, you know, a lot of people in this area of the state, they feel um, forgotten, left out, um, you know, really a lot of people just don't care about politics at this point in the game because, you know, for, for us here, um, Exeter, West Greenwich and Charaho are all combined school districts with different towns. And we continue to lose funding year after year after year for our schools. And we don't get a lot with our taxes, right? So we don't have garbage removal. We don't have a lot of things that um, folks in the city have. <laughs> and so, I think they're right. right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, that was something that we talked a lot about at the doors is, um, you know, fighting for more funding for our school. You know, when you're currently represented by someone who uh, right after the election, there was the budget vote, um, you know, Representative Price refused to put on a mask. So District 39 didn't have a vote. Is that really, he, he wasn't able to vote in that. Yes, he did not vote. He decided that he would rather leave um, okay. than put on a mask and do his his do his job. Wow. And, you know, that that is really telling in our district um, because of all the issues that we see, you know, losing funds for our schools year after year after year. Who's fighting for our schools? Right. right. Who's who's representing us at at, uh, at the state house? And then the other thing we have here is, you know, I'm, I'm a big, um, you know, I'm big. I have three kids. I want them to have a world when they grow up. And if we don't start taking care of our environment, there's not going to be much left. And there's some things in our rural community that, um, you know, it, it's not really, uh, there's no light being shown on it because it, there's not a lot of voices talking about it. So, you know, we need to transition to renewable energy, but we need to do it in a way that is smart. And um, here we're doing a lot of clear cutting. We have a lot of land here. Mm -hmm. and there's been massive amounts of clear cutting. So we're talking, you know, 40 acres at, at a time for solar fields. Right, and, right. You know, what that does to, you know, the, the, the land here, it's, it's um, you know, we really need to start talking about conserving our forestry here. And so that was another issue that we talked about a lot at the doors that really resonated with people. Mm -hmm. um, we, we all have well water, um, there's flooding issues. There's so many different um, issues that go along with clear cutting. Right, and is the water quality maintained there? I mean, the water quality is still good in the wells there? Well, so here's the thing, you know, when you talk to someone whose property abuts, you know, uh, a, a huge solar farm, there's a lot of problems. You know, obviously the forest, like as, as it rains, it filters the water. Um, I know people who've had to replace pumps two and three times after the solar farms have been built because there's no filtration anymore and a lot of sediments going into the pump. So, you know, you're talking, you know, $900 for a new pump, you know, it's, it's, it's an unnecessary cost that a lot of families you know, if you can't afford, that's great. But who wants to throw nine hundred dollars out the window just because there's a solar farm there now? It certainly seems to offset any savings you might get from having a solar farm nearby, right? Right. And and honestly, if your property abuts a solar farm, you're not benefiting. Um, the right. landowner is benefiting, but you're certainly not. Right. Right. So these are all right. So these are interesting issues. But I've never actually heard. Well, I shouldn't say I've never it's impossible. And I've never actually heard Representative Price bring these things up while he's been there. 
and you won't because um, he he's he doesn't I, you know I don't feel like he's listening and we're like at this pivotal moment in time right now where we need to come together in unity and that's really where you know you had mentioned his his comments on social media um, if you look at this election and you look at our district it was really split i think biden won richmond by two votes <laughs> wow. and yeah so when you look at an area that is really divided like that um we need representatives who are going to represent both sides of the spectrum you know and i really feel like if i had been elected i would have tried to properly represent the people who didn't vote for me in the same way of you know as those who did and i think that's one of the biggest issues is that you know you see it all over the community pages our, our community is being torn apart and if you take away democrat take away republican biden trump you take all these things away and you talk to people and you just talk about the issues we're all the same we all have the same issues we all have the same same things that we care about. We all care about our children's future. We all care about what's happening with our environment, you know, our taxes. These are issues that everyone cares about. We all feel pretty much the same way. It's just how we get there is different. And that's one thing that's really, you know, through all of this, the most upsetting thing is that we have representation that that doesn't care about people who didn't vote for him. Mm. Oh, interesting. All right. So um, during your election, you were probably doing a lot of work, going door to door as much as possible with COVID, sending out mailers, that kind of thing. Um, you had some trouble, even though you were endorsed by several local democratic institutions, and you can talk about that. You were not endorsed or you were not helped by the statewide Democratic Party. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I think um, we need to, to, there's a greater conversation within the party um, that, that I think is happening. Um, I was endorsed by the Richmond Democrats, the Exeter Democrats, um, and I was also endorsed by my district committee, which consists of five older folks who I interviewed with them. They um, helped me along through my campaign, just amazing gentlemen. Um, and once you get endorsed by your district committee, typically you go to the party and they give you the party van, which yeah. is extremely important when running a campaign. It, it gives you, um, you know, everything you need to know. You create lists, you can, you can look up any voter, whether they're Democrat, independent, Republican, how often they've voted. And you create your, your door knocking list based off, you know, van, you put in a couple of things and boom, you've got a list of however you want, you know, whatever you're focused on that day. Maybe you're fo focused on independent voters. I did a lot of independent voter um, door knocks. So typically, you know, that would come party van is not a charged, um, you know, that would just come being an endorsed candidate. There were no other Democratic candidates in my race. Right. So it would have made sense to just kind of, um, you know, the, that would have been the bare minimum of help um, to, to win such a right wing, um, you know, running against someone who's so right wing and so um, not a Democrat, right? <laughs> Definitely not a Democrat say that i'm sure he would be here he'd say the same thing not a democrat exactly and so what they do is they send you a rejection letter the party and then you take your rejection letter and you take it to van um because it is a democratic tool and then you purchase van so the the rejection letter basically says that you are not an endorsed candidate and which would be fine if i was not an endorsed candidate but being an endorsed candidate right. i was confused by the letter. Um, so I asked like, hey, here's like the documentation. I was the endorsed candidate. And it's like, well, that's just something we have to say so that you can go and purchase it. So it kind of doesn't make sense. But I think, you know, I'm really feeling optimistic for the future because I think that with new leadership in place, um, we're going to see a very different uh, Democratic Party moving forward. You know, I've already spoken to the new speaker and he's he told me that if, you know, if I want access to party van, that he will make sure that I get that. Interesting. OK. So Good. I think, you know, that that was um, a, a great feeling getting off the phone call um, and getting that kind of that head nod and that, you know, um, because we are Democrats. Right. I mean, we may not fall on the same you know, we may push people left um, and talk about issues that are, 
not necessarily, you know, uh, issues that this this Democratic Party in Rhode Island has really been been talking about, but we're still all under the same roof. Right, right, right. Well, that's what I hear from Democrats, that this is a big part, big tent is what I hear. But then when it comes, push comes to shove, oftentimes I see in the electoral process, especially, well, if you look a little too lefty, they don't want you in. They don't want you, or if you, they disagree with you in some way, or if you're consorting with the wrong kind of people, well, we don't want you to represent the party now. And so that seems to be a self-defeating because in this case, as you point out, had you been able to get a few extra votes, this whole issue about Justin Price being in Washington, D.C. would be a non-starter. He'd be a private citizen in D.C., whether he committed crimes or not, something the FBI can talk about, and we don't have to worry about it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I think, too, you know, the other piece, I think a lot of people in the party didn't think I had a winnable race. Um, yeah. I think a lot of people have have kind of, um, you know, they've they've written my district off as a red district. Um, you know, a Democrat can win here. But I, I don't. Obviously, that's not true. Right. I mean, I came, you know, within. uh <laughs> a snowball's uh, throw of, of this election. So that's, that's not true. What it really comes down to is talking to people and listening to them. And had I had maybe more time, maybe I had knocked on more doors, you know, there's a thousand things, you know, that, that maybe should have, would have, could have, you know, I, I didn't do a, um, a negative mailer or a contrast mailer. Right. Um, I had one ready to go, you know, and at the last minute I, I pulled it because I felt like, do I want to go do I, you know, nothing in it was wrong. Nothing in it was a lie. It was all stuff that Justin Price had said, which, right, right. <laughs> you know, there's a lot to pick from there. <laughs> a lot of that comes from me. I covered some of that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then at the last minute, you know, I talked to my husband. We live here. This is our community. And I didn't want to go that route. Had I sent that mailer out, though, um, I wouldn't have heard people say like, I didn't know he was like this. I wouldn't have voted for him, you know? Yeah, and it's kind yeah. of like, man, you know. Well, it's a hard, it's a hard thing because, I, and I understand that. Everybody ha everybody running has this issue, right? Like how negative do I go? Do I, I mean, how much do I say about him? It looks, it feels petty to say things like, you know, he introduced a bill that would make it legal to run people over or, you know, he, fought for a gay panic defense, that kind of stuff, right? And these are things he did. And these are things that, you know, are on video and easily is found, findable. But at the same time, it's not something you're thinking your rep is doing for you. And everybody's busy. Little bills that go nowhere, they don't, right? We're not watching those, but they are revealing, I think, of character and politics. And kind of important to know. You know, progressive policies are not the only thing that can can get you elected. And, and unfortunately, you know, there's only so much time. There's only so many things that you can say, only so many doors you can knock on. The, the issues though, that we talked about resonated with people here. And the issues are really what I was hoping to get elected upon. And also, you know, I, I made sure to stay positive, you know, fight hate with love type of uh, campaign. And, and we did stay very positive. And I'm very proud of the campaign that we ran. And I, I thought, you know, if, if I have to go negative to win, then, then I don't want to win. Um, and that was kind of what we had said, you know, looking back, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe there's a tone you can find that allows you to talk about your opponent without sounding like you're on them too hard. I don't know how to do it, to be honest. I've read, a, I've used a lot of campaign literature. Um, and sometimes, you know, since you're not a known quantity yet, you can't really run on your record. So you have right. to run on the record of your opponent and point out where their values might deviate from traditional values. Exactly. And um, I wasn't joking on the comment when I said these tweets will make a fabulous mailer in 2022, because they will. I think, and people need I, to know. I think on this case, I think do I think it's important. I mean, there's a possibility I'll be talking to Justin at some point. Um, for some reason, we get along, and he trusts me. And you know, and I've never said any. I've never lied about him, right? I report him what he does and says. And so he, we may talk. And if we talk, um, we're going to talk about the comments he made because you know where he falsely said that it was Antifa and Black Lives Matter protesters who stormed the Capitol and that Trump supporters were there to stop this from happening. And there is absolutely no indication that that happened. There's no evidence of this whatsoever. And one of the questions I sincerely will ask him is, 
given that these statements are not true and they're clearly not true, uh, you know, the, the public has to either believe that you're delusional or you're lying, right? We can't, there there's, doesn't seem to be a third option there that's much good. And I don't think either of those makes for a very good representative. Well, I think, too, at the end of the day, like I had said, you know, looking at how the election turned out, you have a very divided district as far as political beliefs. So I think really what we need in our elected officials right now is no matter what, where you stand on that spectrum and what your personal beliefs are, your job and your role is to bring people together and to talk about the things that are important to us. And I think that being an elected official at the local level, you need to be talking about local issues. You need to be talking about things and fighting for things that your constituents care about. We care about the solar farms. We care about our schools. We care about, um, you know, our roads, our bridges, uh, a stop sign at certain locations, right? Like, these are the things that, you know, I, I want my elected official to be talking about and to be fighting for. I don't really want to hear what you think about, um, you know, Antifa on social media, you know? I mean, I don't think that, that that's going to do nothing but continue to divide our community. And I think it's really just, at the end of the day, um, it's counterproductive, you can probably hear my dog's bell. That's okay. <laughs> this, this is the world we live in now. We're all doing this from home, right? That's the way this works. Normally, we try to find a place where we could meet and be quiet and hang out. But here, we have to do it, you know. Toast. Toast. Dogs, are, dogs are fine. Kids are fine. It's, it's all good. Yeah. He has a bell on um, so we can hear him coming, right? right. And so he's scratching his neck. Is he a big dog? He is. He's a golden doodle. Oh, there you go. Okay, yeah. Cool. All right. Um, is there anything I should have asked that I didn't or anything you were expecting to have to say that you didn't have to say that I didn't pull out of you? Um, I don't know. No, I think I think you covered it all. I mean, just for the record, though, um, I will win in 2022. That is a promise. Fantastic. Good. Uh, well, <laughs> we'll look forward to it. We'll see how that goes. And uh, yeah, I'll be still doing this in 2022. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we should stay in touch and uh, I'll try to cover the race a little bit more this time. I was distracted by all the multiple crises of the year so yeah, wasn't sure. wasn't as in depth as i would have liked but then you know two years from now who knows what will happen so looking forward to it yes i appreciate that me too thank you for taking the time with me i really appreciate it no i think it's a great story and i really wanted to cover it with you and uh, this is nice to see you face to face and really talk it out so this is great thank you yeah awesome